it's so fun. I'm talking to him like he, he's a little brother to me, you know? But uh, yeah, I really want Trent to understand that no, even though he might not be the best in school or whatever, he might not have the skill set that those around him have. That's okay. He has a big heart. Kristen here, and we're chatting with my pal, Benjamin Norris, who stars as Trent in Never Have I Ever. We're talking all about the third season, from romance to graduating. There's a lot to get into, so I hope you enjoy this conversation. Congratulations, yeah. of course, on Never Have I Ever season three. Thank you. I gotta say, this is my favorite season yet. Good. It was so I'm much fun. So glad to hear that. I love, I love it, too. I think it's such a fun, such a fun season. The kids are going to love it. Like, the kids are going to freak out. Yeah. So, okay. So what can you tell us about this new season and what Trent is up to? So this season, uh, Trent has found love and, uh, you know, he had love before with Paxson, but this is a new kind of love. And um, I think Trent and Eleanor just make so much sense. And I'm so excited to see what kind of shenanigans these two are up to because like, you just never know what you're going to get with this couple. Oh, a hundred percent. And I got to say like, at the end of season two, when they were like hinting about Trent and Eleanor, I was like the most excited. And you guys, like like you said, you're a great match together. What was it like working opposite each other as, as actors? Ramona and I are on very much so the same page when we're performing. I mean, she's a dream to work with. She's, I always say this, but she's incredibly prepared as an actor. She takes her work very seriously and also has so much fun on set. And I feel like, I feel like I'm very similar to that. And, um, and on top of that, you know what, it really helps that we both really love our own characters. And so we just have fun being them. And so um, we always kept things light, things were always a good time. And um, we were just always kind of there for each other, you know, it was just so much fun watching the two of you and, and kind of how you like explore your relationship and just kind of like those levels of like, there's like some silly moments, but also there are some like really sweet moments that you're like, Oh, okay, like, yes, there is. that's right. I love it. And so I'm team Trelinor as Great. I'm as I'm dubbing it right now. Great. Um but there are a lot of really exciting romances that are introduced this season. So who are you who are you shipping? Oh man. I mean, look, the love triangle is going to be the love triangle and uh you know, I can't really choose sides there because I have uh you know, I have a very st strong backup to my day one homie Paxton, but Aside from that, I, I really love Fabiola's love life in this season. She's exploring herself. She's exploring herself with an Anissa, and then she's exploring herself with someone else. And and um, I really love watching her go on that journey. And, and um, it's really cool because I think that character realizes that she doesn't have to be boxed in in any certain type of way. You know, she can just like wherever her heart takes her, she's going to follow and um, I just love that for a character. I'd love to hear about some of your favorite moments on set or scenes to film this season. One of my favorite scenes to film was when uh, Eleanor is doing an audition and I'm helping her with that. And just the absurdity of that entire scene. There's a stripper pole. The, the monologue she's doing is from Hustlers and uh, there's pyrotechnics in it. And so to me, that is just, that is one of the most complete Trent Eleanor scenes you can get and from top to bottom shooting that entire scene I just remember having fun the whole time I always have fun but that was really like I can't believe we get to do this absolutely I mean yeah. the true dedication that he had to making sure that she was shining it was yeah, great exactly yeah <laughs> And, you know, something else that I thought was very interesting this season is, you know, Trent's kind of struggle with the idea of, you know, moving on after high school. And so I'm curious about, like, your take on that. Great question, because I myself, Ben, is was very much so like Trent in high school. You know, I I enjoyed my high school experience. I know every, not not everyone did. And of course, there were parts of it that were very rough. But Overall, I enjoyed my experience. I loved my friends and I love my hometown where I'm from. And so the idea of change and the idea of people who I love leaving to go to different places, that was really difficult on me. So I think I brought some of that into my performance um, because you know what, Trent, Trent loves to love. He loves those around him. He especially loves Paxton. And um, I think it's really difficult for Trent to understand a world where he's not you know, with those people every day, just like a lot of high schoolers out there. So I'm really glad that the writers put put that in there for his character, because I think it just makes so much sense. Um, 
But you know what? One great thing about Trent is that I think he's shown so much growth throughout the seasons, which I don't know if a lot of people saw that coming. I don't know if I saw that coming, to be honest with you. But um, he's so three dimensional now and he's and he's he's an onion. You peel back the layers and, um, you know, by the end of it, it was really cool to kind of see him accept um, the changes and accept the future. I love that. The, the onion. It's like, yeah, the, it's like Shrek, you know, it's literally <laughs> like Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, what, what you said about the characters going, I think everybody really all the characters really grew so much over these last three seasons. And I feel like yep. that's what made this season so satisfying was that like you really saw everybody kind of grow so much and going off of that what what are you kind of hoping for Trent moving forward things do change and people change you know whatever he decides to do in life even if it's even if the first thing doesn't work out or the next thing doesn't work out he'll he'll find his his footsteps he'll find his path you know whether it's with someone or as on his own and um yeah I just I I you know it's so fun. I'm talking to him like he, he's a little brother to me, you know, but uh, yeah, I really want Trent to understand that no, even though he might not be the best in school or whatever, he might not have the skill set that those around him have. That's OK. He is who he is. He should be proud of that. And so whatever he decides to do in life, he'll be just fine because, you you know what? People like Trent, you know, <laughs> and that's 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 important. He has a big heart. And, you know, we've gotten to see um, John McEnroe narrating Davey, Andy Samberg narrating Ben, Gigi Hadid for Paxton. If Trent could have his own narrator, who do you think it would be and why? I always say Seth Rogen um, for very obvious reasons. But uh, fairly recently, I actually saw someone online. I'll give I don't know their name, but I'll give a shout out. This was a fan who suggested Keanu Reeves. And I was like, Ooh. wow. That's actually not bad because Keanu Reeves really was. I mean, look at the development of that actor in general. And he started out as kind of the surfer stonery kind of guy. And then, you know, he turned into Neo. And it's just like you never know where this guy's going to go. And then you watch interviews with him. And he's actually like really deep and really like sincere and genuine. And um, I think that's what Trent is. I don't know if Trent is Neo. I don't think he's the one. But um <laughs> But I do think he is this guy that people like to laugh at and people saw as kind of a joke. And then he opens his mouth and sometimes, you know, things come out that you weren't expecting. And so. Um, so, yeah, originally it was Seth Rogen. But I'm going to I'm going to say Keanu Reeves. I love that. That's right? like a really good one. A good one. Yeah. You guys on the show recently competed on Celebrity Family Feud, which was so much fun yeah. against the cast of High School Musical, the musical, the series. What was that like? Oh, man. Well, number one, it was a dream come true for me because I love Family Feud. I love Steve Harvey. Big Steve Harvey stan. Um, he's just he's not many people out there are, are as good at what they do as 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 him. So I was very excited for it. But you know what? I was very cocky going into it. I was telling my whole castmates, I was like, we got this. Like, We're going to take this team down. And I think I gave some of the stupidest an answers in, in Family Feud history. I just froze. I don't know what happened. But you know what? It was very Trent-like. And so was it on brand? Yeah, it was on brand. But it was so much fun. High School Musical, the musical, the series, they are all so sweet. And it was really nice meeting them. That's so funny. I feel like I watch reality shows or, you know, like the game shows too. And I'm like, oh, this is so easy. I'd get it. You get it at home. And then you get there and you're like, I'm sure it's like, oh my God, what am I? I can't think of any single word at all. I think what it was for me is, you know, improv is my strong suit. I mean, that's what I'm trained in. And so to me going into it, I was like, I'm just going to look at it as improv. I got this, you know, but Maybe the fact that it was a game and there was like a, you know, a prize on the line and I'm a very competitive person. I think that hindered my improv skills and all of a sudden my improv and my competing skills just kind of got jumbled up and then out came spaghetti plate was my first answer. And I, I'm, I'm never going to live that down. And that's OK. I'm OK with that. And going off of that, you got a lot of really exciting projects in the works. I've seen you're, you're working on Pacific Park and Putty Sticks. What can you tell us about about what you're working on? What, what can you tease? Putty Sticks, I'm actually really excited about. Um, the, the director reached out to me. Director Megan reached out to me um, through my team and, and, you know, asked if I wanted kind of uh, it's kind of a cameo role in it. Um, and so I read the script and it was unlike any script I've ever read. Um, it's very different. It's, it's weird. And I mean that in the best way possible. And it has so much heart in it, which 
for me, like anything I read, I want to make sure it has heart in it. And so she, she, she really was able to do that with the script. Um, and Dan back at all is in it, who I'm a huge fan of. And, um, when I, when I shot that, I only shot it in a couple of days and, um, it was such a small set and very intimate and, and it really felt like everyone there, um, really cared about the project, which is another thing that I think is so important. So I'm really excited. I'm not sure when that's going to come out, but, um, but yeah, I'm very excited for people to see that. You're like killing it, man. I, yeah. I love to see it. Thank and, you. Um, and speaking of people that are killing it, uh, I know you're good friends with Quinta Brunson and she is killing it in the sitcom space. And I'm curious for you, like, you know, watching, um, you know, a friend kind of come up and, and you know, have this big breakthrough. Um, were you able to kind of take anything away from from seeing her in that experience? And do you think we might ever see you on Abbott Elementary? To that last question, hopefully we'll see. But you never know, you know, and the way to anyone out there who's trying to get get break into the industry, you know, there's a very one of the one of the very important lesson in this industry is that, you know, there are plenty of shows and movies that you want to be a part of out there, but you have to make sure that there is a part that's right for you, you know? And so um, we'll see on that front. If there is something that's right for me, I would love to be in it. But, uh, but that show is, is living and breathing on its own. And it is so fantastic. Um, Quinta is one of my really dear friends from college. We met back in college and uh it was only a matter of when for her, not if. I, I always knew she was destined for great things. She's one of the most talented people I know, and uh, she's always known what she wanted. Um, but it's it's really cool to have a close friend who's also one of my biggest influences. I mean, I look up to Quinta. I, I always have the way she carries herself. Even when she first popped off with her Instagram videos, the He Got Money videos, um, you know, people would start coming up to her on the street and they would start recognizing her. And I would watch the way she carried herself with these people. It's like it doesn't matter who they were. Like she always made it a point to, to you know, make sure they understand like, yeah, I'm in this moment with you. What's your name? Oh, that's very nice to meet you. And ma they made she made them feel special. And so I carry that with me. So I've learned a lot from her. I'm so freaking proud of her. And um, yeah, the, the sky is the limit with her. It was so great catching up with you. I'm so proud of you. You're doing such incredible things. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really enjoy our talks and I know there's gonna be a lot more of them. Yes, yes, absolutely. Consider subscribing if you like my videos and if you wanna talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out the exclusive Discord available on my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya.